Hi guys, my name is Marty from letsbuildwp.com and today I'm going to show you how to install WordPress on the HostGators web hosting. I'm also going to cover the steps of signing up for HostGator as well so nothing's missed out. And I'll also show you how to get your first month hosting for only one penny. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is open up your internet browser and go to www.hostgator.com or alternatively, you can just click the link below this video. Once you get to Hostgator's homepage, you just want to click on the top left where it says web hosting and then it's going to show you the different hosting plans they have to offer. To be honest with you, the business plan comes with a whole load of added extras you probably won't require at this time. So that really just leaves it between the hatchling plan and the baby plan. The difference between these two is that the hatchling plan allows you one single domain, which is one website, and the baby plan allows you to have unlimited domains, which is literally as many websites as you'd like. If you're only going to have one website, I recommend going for the hatchling plan because it's a little cheaper. But if you're going to have more than one website, go for the baby plan and you can have as many as you like. Once you've decided what hosting plan you're going to go for, you can just click here in the drop down menu and this is where you can choose how often you'd like to pay for it. As you can see, you can choose to pay for it once a month, or you can pay for it every six months, or you can even pay for it every three years. It is a little bit cheaper the more you buy at one time, so that might be something to consider. I'm going to set mine to monthly just for now, and once you're happy with everything, you can just click sign up now. That's going to bring you to this page here, and this is where we're going to register the new domain name for our website. So you just want to type whatever you want your domain name to be in this box here. So I'm going to call my site Marty's Examples Site, because it is just an example site I'm building for this video. So Marty's Examples Site. Then once you've typed in your domain name, you can choose the extension using this drop down. And by extension, I mean whether you want it to end in .com or something else like .org or .net. For this example, I'm just going to leave it as .com. So my website's going to be martysexamplesite.com. Once you've added in your domain name, it's going to come up and say whether it's available or not. If it comes up and says added, that means the domain name's available. But if it comes up and says it's not available, you are going to need to choose something else for your domain name. If you do already have a domain name that you bought from somewhere else, you can click here where it says I already own a domain and you can type it in. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to register a new one. Once you've added in your domain name, you can check the box beside any other domain extensions you want to buy as well. So you could buy .com as well as .org at the same time but I'm just going to buy the one, which is martysexamplesite.com. Once you're happy with your domain name, if you just scroll down underneath, you'll see it says choose a hosting plan. Just double check that your package type and billing cycle are both correct. So I choose the baby hosting plan and monthly billing cycle. So these are both right. Then underneath, you can choose a username and security pin for logging into the site. Under that, it's going to ask for your general billing information. So you just type in your email, first name, last name, things like that. Your company name, as it says, is not required. Once you've typed in your general information on the right hand side, you can choose whether you want to pay using a credit card or PayPal. I normally use PayPal myself, but you can choose credit card if you want. Underneath that, you're going to see it says add additional services. I personally just uncheck all three of these boxes, but you can have a read through them and see if any of them interest you. Underneath, it then asks you to enter a coupon code and you might see there's already one entered in. You can see here it says snappy. The snappy coupon code is worth 20% off. But as I said, I'm going to show you how to get your first month hosting for only one penny. To get your first month hosting for only one penny, just change where it says snappy to building WP1. That's all one word, building WP and then the number one. Once you type it in, just click here where it says validate and you'll see that the price is now reflecting the discount. So it's $12.95 for your domain name and then only one penny for your first month hosting. 
I do also just want to draw your attention over here to show that you also get access to their 24 7 phone live chat and email support which is great if you run into any problems and they also come with a 45 day money back guarantee so if you decide that running a website isn't for you you can just contact HostGator and they'll refund you for both your domain name and your hosting once you're happy with everything, you can just click here in the box beside where it says I have read and agreed to the terms of service, cancellation policy and privacy policy, and then just click check out now. I'm just going to pause the video for a minute while I fill out my information up here. And once I'm done, I'll restart the video and we can click check out now together. So I'm just going to pause the video now and I'll be right back. Okay, so that's me now back and I've filled out all my personal information above and I'm going to click check out now. Only it turns out that HostGator have slightly changed the way their site works and now when I click check out now it's going to bring me to PayPal. So I'm going to pause the video again. After I click check out now, I'm going to fill out my PayPal information and then I'm going to restart the video. So if you just want to go ahead and click check out now, this is where it's going to ask you for your billing information. So just fill out that. And once you've done it and submitted it, restart this video and I'll be on the same page as you. Okay, so that's me now back. And as you can see, I'm on this page that says, Welcome to the HostGator family. Hopefully you're on the same page. And if you are, you'll see underneath it says, Check your inbox for the welcome email. So just head on over to your email inbox and you'll find this email that says, Thank you for choosing HostGator. If you click in there, you'll see it says, thank you for your order with HostGator. You can now log into our online billing system to manage your account. It then gives you a link to your billing portal, your login name and your password. This is an important email, so keep it safe, but it's not the email we need at the minute. If you just go back into your inbox, you'll hopefully have this other email that says your account info. It sometimes takes a few minutes for this to come through because they do have to get your account set up. So if you just leave it a couple of minutes if it hasn't showed up and refresh your emails, it should show up. So once you get this email that says your account info, just click into it and you'll see here it says your control panel with a link and then it also says your username and your password. So for now, this is what we're going to do. We're gonna click this link beside where it says your control panel and this is where we're going to log into the HostGator C panel where we'll install WordPress. So just click on the link beside where it says your control panel. And then go back into your email and copy your username. And then paste it in. And then just do the same for your password as well. Just highlight it with your mouse, right click, copy, and then paste it into the C panel login screen. Once you do that, just click where it says login. Then once you're logged in, you just want to scroll down to where it says quick install. It's just under where it says software and services. It says quick install. So just click there. And now on the left hand side, just click where it says WordPress. And then if you scroll down on the right hand side, you'll see here it says install WordPress. Just click there and it's going to bring you to this form where you want to choose your domain name from this drop down. You should only have the one if you've just signed up for your hosting now, but if you've got more than one domain name, just choose the main one you're wanting to use for now. Where it says install path here, I would just normally leave this box blank. I'll explain to you what it does. If I was to install martysexamplesite.com with something typed into this box, say I typed in the word blog into this box. I would actually be installing WordPress onto martysexamplesite.com forward slash blog. If someone went to martysexamplesite.com, there would be nothing on it. It would actually just be on forward slash blog. So you want to leave this box blank and that'll make sure that it goes to the right domain name. Then underneath where it says admin email, you just want to enter in your email address. Then where it says blog title, this is literally just the title of your website. Don't worry, this can be changed. I'm just gonna type in Marty's example site. Then it's gonna ask for admin user. This is maybe gonna show up in a few different places. So you wanna write something like either your first name or admin or something like that. I'm just gonna type in admin. 
Then for first name, just type in your first name and last name, obviously type in your last name. That's not my real last name by the way, it's just what I use for videos. Then once you've typed in all your information, you can just click here where it says install WordPress. Once it's installed, you can see here at the top, it'll say your install is complete. Click here to view your notifications. So just click on that bar. And then here on the right hand side, just click where it says my installs. Now here you'll see it says your domain name and admin login. So just click here where it says admin login. That's going to bring us to our new WordPress installs login screen, where we're going to type in our username and our password. So our username we just set up, I used admin, you might have used your first name or something like that. Then for your password, you just want to go back to your email inbox and you should have a new email called install complete. And if you click in there, you'll see it shows your username and your password. So just highlight your password, right click and copy, and then go back to the login screen, paste it in, and then click login. The first thing I like to do after logging in is change my password because it's very unlikely that I'm ever going to remember this one. So to change your password in WordPress, you just want to click on the left hand side where it says users, then hover over the username that you created and when it shows up click where it says edit. Now if you just scroll down to the bottom you'll see it says new password, just type your new password in here. Then underneath it says repeat new password, so just type it in again. Once you've done that, just click underneath where it says update profile. And that means next time you come to the WordPress login screen, you'll just use that password instead of this one. So that's how you install WordPress onto HostGator's web hosting. I hope you found this video useful and if you have please give it a like and leave a comment underneath. Also feel free to subscribe to my channel for more WordPress tutorials like this one. Once again my name is Marty from letsbuildwp.com and thank you very much for watching my video.